We've got two single males. Ecologist Sarah Grady and volunteers have a small window every year to monitor the horseshoe crab population in Duxbury Bay, their spawning season. We are trying to measure the spawning index and the, the crab density over many years to get a sense of how their populations are doing. Believe it or not, horseshoe crabs are actually a hot commodity. They're used as bait for the eel and conch fisheries, and on a smaller scale, their blood is harvested for the biomedical industry. A mating pair and a single male. Volunteers like Carolyn Soans keep count by measuring every five meters. And on this day, there are a lot of single males trolling the shore. How can you tell that it's a male crab? Typically, crabs that are all alone are going to be male crabs because they haven't found a female to latch onto, and we have a lot more males than females. If there's a female crab, she almost certainly will have a male crab latched onto the back of her shell. Okay. Because she's a catch. Yes, exactly. Yep, and the males have special claws, and uh, those allow him to really lock onto the female's shell. Once he locks on, she carries him off to shore where she lays her eggs and he promptly fertilizes them. There was a drop in the population in Duxbury between 2008 and 2012, but Grady says it's been increasingly stable since then. In places where there would be declines, it would probably be attributed to either bait harvesting or loss of habitat. And that matters because the horseshoe crab has become very important to the general population. These little clawed creatures have very special blood, it clots immediately when exposed to the tiniest trace of bacteria, making it an invaluable tool in the biomedical field. Since the 1970s, the FDA has mandated that all injectable drugs and vaccines must be exposed to a small amount of horseshoe crab blood to ensure their sterility. While the crabs are released back into the ocean, about 10 to 20 percent of them don't survive. 98 crabs altogether. Seven females, yeah. It's so not a very high spawning index, yep. but um, pretty good crab density. Which Grady says is typical as the spawning period is tapering off. A couple of weeks ago, they hit the jackpot when they counted an overwhelming 1,200 horseshoe crabs. Duxbury tends to have a much higher spawning index than some of the other bays in the state. So we see um, more females to males. Meaning these guys should be around for another 450 million years. And Christina Quinn joins me now to talk more crabs. More horseshoe yeah, crabs, You yes. want to do something a little different today, right? Yes, I actually am um, going to give you a pop quiz. Horseshoe okay. crab pop quiz. All right. All right, we'll start off a little, give you a soft lob here, ready? A scientist at which Cape Cod lab discovered the horseshoe crab's blood clotting mechanism? This one I know because it is the famous Woods Hole, right? Ding, I don't ding, know the ding. Name, yes, Woods Hole. it is the yeah. Marine Biological Laboratory in Woods Hole. Okay. And the, the scientist's name was Frederick Bang. And, uh, Frederick Bang? Frederick Bang. Bang, okay. bang, yeah. And in the late 1950s, he made this discovery. Hmm. Yep. Who knew? Who knew? Well, I... I mean, yeah, it's I mean, the Woods Hole. Well, now part, I know. Right, the Woods right. Hole people, yeah. They knew. I didn't know beforehand. All right, now it's going to get okay. harder. So, yeah. Why is horseshoe crab blood blue, Adam? A uh, high amount of a certain chemical. Hey, yeah. uh, uh, heavily oxygenated. Oh, you, you are so close. Yeah. Okay, so unlike us humans... Horseshoe crab bloods, they don't have hemoglobin. We have hemoglobin to transport oxygen. They have hemocyanin, and that has copper in it. Hmm. So, like, our blood has, um, it's red because of the iron in it, right, right. and their blood is blue because it has copper. Interesting. The hemocyanin has and copper in it. And useful to know. Yes. Also. <laughs> useful. Right, so we got yeah. two more, yeah. right? Okay. All right. The horseshoe crab is called a crab. However, it is more closely related to which eight-legged invertebrate? Uh, eight-legged invertebrate. That includes bugs, right? Yes. Uh, 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 spiders? Hey, yes. Spiders? I mean, I was pretty generous with that yeah. hint there. Yes, the what? arachnid, uh, they both belong to the same subphylum. So they're crabs, but they're actually closer to, to spiders and crabs. Hmm. Yes, it has something to do with the way their body is segmented. They're kind of creepy looking, by the way. I don't. I didn't like yeah. seeing the images of them. But friendly. Kind of they don't. Out, yeah. They don't pinch. All right. Uh, you have one I more do. question. I have right? one more the question. Finale. This is the bonus one. At what age do horseshoe crabs start mating? Uh, six months. No, ten years. Really? I know. It made me wonder, like, what are they doing for ten years? Huh. I think they're just... They're just hanging out, and then just, they get yeah. curious about their bodies, yeah. and nature <laughs> takes its course, right? Yes. All right, Christina Quinn, thank you.